Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and this is the first video on the binomial expansion. This is aimed at A-level maths, uh, in particular Edexcel, but is applicable to most other maths modules. Okay, so um, the first video here is about this man here called Pascal. And he was a Fren French mathematician and one of the um, things he's most noted for or most well known for is this um, pyramid here. Um, known as Pascal's Triangle and what he did was he he started with a one at the top and put two ones underneath and if you add the two terms um, together above you get the term below so one and two gives us three two and one gives us three one and three gives us four three and three gives us six three and one gives us four and etc and it can continue on indefinitely so we can get more values underneath um, this is going to be a 4, so we'd end up with a 5 here, we'd end up with a 10, a 10, and another 5, and we'd have 1s outside, and we can, we can keep on going indefinitely. And what we found out is that this particular, particular structure is very useful for working out the coefficients in a binomial expansion. So where we have some um, binomial, um, where we have two terms, and we're raising it to some power. N. And if we were to expand this out, um, this triangle helps us work out what numbers are going in front of each term. So let's just uh, consider the general um, binomial a plus b to the power of n. And let's first of all, let's work out what a plus b to the power 0 might be. Well, anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1. Something else I didn't mention, uh, n is an element of the natural number, so it's a positive whole number. Um, now let's do a plus b to the power 1, that's simply going to be a plus b. And if we did a plus b squared and tidy it all up, we'd end up with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And we might even go so far as to do a plus b to the power 3. And if we were to do that and tidy it up, we'll end up with a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. That's what we would end up with. And if we were to go even one step further and say do a plus b to the power of 4, and expand it all out and tidy it up, we'd end up with this, a to the power of 4 plus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the power of 4. So that's what we would get if we were to expand this out and tidy it up. And if you don't believe me, you can uh, do check it out. Now, how could I do that so quickly and how does it relate to Pascal's triangle? So, you may have spotted this. Um, the coefficients, um, or the numbers in front of a and b here, are 1 and 1. We have a 1 and a 1 there and that seems to relate to these. Here we've got a coefficient of 1, coefficient of 2, coefficient of 1, 1, 2, 1. Here we have a coefficient of 1, then 3, then 3, then 1, and here we are again, 1, 3, 3, and 1. And then finally, down here, we have 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And let's see, 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. So, Pascal's triangle is really useful for helping us work out what numbers are going to go in front of each term. And also you might have noticed another little pattern developing and that's the uh, powers. So if we look at this example, the bottom one here, the power of 4, we start, well, I know I'm going to have an a to the 4 and then I'm going to have some number of a to the 3s, I'm going to have some number of a squareds, some number of a's and you'll notice that it's reducing each time by one. So it goes 4, power of 3, power of 2, power of 1, and a power of 0 
gives us uh, is simply 1, so we end up with just the b to the power of 4. And also, if you notice the powers of b, here we have b to the power of 0, if you think about that, then b to the power of 1, then b squared, then b to the power of 3, and then b to the power of 4. So the first term, the first term, the powers seem to be descending. And the second term, the powers seem to be ascending, so growing. And if we can remember that, and remember Pascal's triangle, we can expand lots of different um, binomials. So let's test it out with an example here. So I've got x squared plus 2y to the power of 3. Okay, so this is the power of 3, which means we're going to have um, cubic terms. So we'll have cubes, squares, singles, and then powers of 0. So we're looking at this row here. You always go, if it's a power of 3, you go to the 4th row. If it's a power of 4, you go to the 5th row, etc., etc. So I went to the 4th row, and I know that the coefficients are going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. So I know the coefficients are going to go here. I also know that we start with ascending power or descending powers of x's. So I'll have an x cubed. So the coefficient of 1 is here. Plus, now I need to put a 3. Coefficient of 3. I'm going to reduce the power of x by 1 because the x is the first terms, the powers descend. So we get x squared. But the other terms, they ascend. So 0 here, now it's going to be to the power of 1. So I need to multiply by 2y to the power of 1. So that's the second part done. Now we've got to do the next one. The coefficient is 3. I need to reduce the power of x by 1. I need to increase the second term by 1. And then finally, I need to reduce um, the first term. Again, that will give me a power of 0. So we have 1 times x to the power of 0, if you will, times 2y to the power of 3. So I'm increasing that one by 1. OK, let's tie you up. x cubed plus 3 times 2 is 6x squared y plus, now, 2y all squared is 4y squared, and 4 times 3 is 12, so 12xy squared, plus, and then it's 1 times 1 times 2y all cubed, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so we get 8y cubed. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So I need to expand this one now. Okay, and it's power of 4, that means it's the fifth one down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's this row here that we're going to use. Equals, okay, so 1 times this raised to the highest power times this to the power of 0. So I'm going to write this out in full so we can see exactly what's going on. Now, the next coefficient is 4. So I'm going to add 4. I need to reduce this one by 1. So 2x to the power 3. I need to increase this by 1 times negative 5 to the power 1. The next coefficient is going to be a, let me see, we're going to have 3 here and a 3 here. It's going to be 6. I need to reduce this by 1. I need to increase this by 1. And then 4 is the next coefficient. Reduce this by 1. Increase this by 1. 
a little bit more space. And the final coefficient is going to be 1. Uh, reducing this by 1, so you get 2x to the power 0. And increase this by 1, make some more space. So increasing this by 1 times negative 5 to the power 4. Okay, let's tidy this up now. So, uh, 1, that's going to be a 1 as well, 1 times 1, so we just get 2x to the power 4, which is going to give me 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 16x to the power 4, plus, now, 2 cubed is 8, 8 times 4 is um, 32, and 32 times negative 5 is going to give me a negative. So it's going to be negative. Uh, 32 times 5, let's see, you can use a calculator for this. 160. 160. Okay, um, plus, well, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. And then we've got to do 24 times uh, 5 squared is 25 so 24 times 25 is 600 so plus 600 oh that should be x cubed as well 600 x squared and now here we got to do 5 uh, negative 5 cubed is negative 125 um, negative 250 negative 500 so uh, negative 1000 altogether so minus 1000 x and then we have um, negative 5 to the power of 4 everything else is just 1 is going to give me plus 625 and hence we've expanded that pretty tricky binomial relatively easily okay one more example so it says here that the coefficient of x squared in the expansion, 2 minus cx all cubed, is 294. Find the possible values of the constant c. Well, let's just see what c minus, sorry, 2 minus cx to the cube looks like if we use our binomial expansion. So Pascal's triangle, uh, power of 3, that means we're going to the fourth line, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to use this. Okay, so the first power is 1. Oh, sorry, the first coefficient is 1 by 2 to the highest power, which is 3, by the second part, negative cx to the power of 0, plus 3 times. So I need to um, decrease this by 1 and increase this by 1. Notice if you add up the powers you always get 3. Uh, 3 again is the next coefficient. Uh, decrease this by 1. Increase this by 1. And then finally 1 more space again. Um, decreasing this by 1, 2 to the 0, increasing this by 1, minus cx cubed. Now it says that the coefficient of x squared in the expansion of this is this. Okay, so I'm only interested in the coefficient of x squared. So let's just highlight the coefficient of x squared. Where will that appear? I uh, won't have any x squareds here, I uh, won't have any here, but here I do end up with x squareds because I'm going to do minus cx to be squared, which is going to give me an x squared. Okay, so it's in fact it's everything involved with this. So what we can say is that implies that 3 times 2 to the power of 1 times minus c x squared or sorry not the 
uh, yeah, um, is related to the 294. Right, let's see what this is. Um, 3 times 2 is 6, so we get 6c squared x squared is related to this 294, and it says that the coefficient of x squared, in other words, this, so 6c squared must equal that 294. That means that c squared equals 294 divided by 6, which is 49. And then that means that c equals the square root of 49, which is plus or minus 7. Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll be back again with another video soon. All the best.